Hi guys, Fonzie from GM Motorsport. Just giving you a bit of an insight of um, some of the things we do here, including the uh, Pro Charger work. Um, we don't get to see all the ins and outs. Usually sometimes it's just a uh, bit of a uh, quick dyno run in the blurb. So basically what I'll do is show you uh, what is behind in getting one of these monsters to uh, to run and to run properly and and uh, do everything that we need. So the owner here, Glenn, has upgraded the uh, Pro Charger. Uh, he's got an F1 A94. So uh, originally had a DS1 on it. We've got a um, set of couple of Bosch pumps uh, on there with a regulator, pedal block manifold. Um, the injectors are just under uh, 70 pounds. Um, so we're, we're getting to the upper limits of that uh, with this thing. It does just run on normal 98 fuel. It's not a, a corn machine. So a very simple 98. Um, we've got a lot of sensors and telemetry hooked up uh, with this particular car, with all the boosted cars uh, to keep things safe. So basically what we've got here is we've got a, a map sensor hooked in. We've also got an injected duty cycle and we've got RPM. So it's a little bit busy with some of the wires hanging out of it. It's a little bit like Frankenstein, but basically that's what you need to uh, get things going. So um, what I'll show you is uh, behind the scenes and some of the runs here. Um, this is the car with the DX1 um, and basically we've upgraded. So we did some pre-runs before that to see where we were and what power levels were coming in at. Here's our Lambda. Uh, you can see with the red dot and the cursor, I'll let you follow that over. And also over here is our uh, boost relation. Uh, so if you can see here, that's where we were and that's where we ended up. So we've got about 18 to 19 pounds of um, boost into it and see the, the red cursor here. Um, that's our injected duty cycle. Um, so you can see that going across um, up there. Mid range, even in peak torque, we've got enough injector in the 70s. Uh, right up to seven or six thousand nine hundred and uh, we start to run and we max the injector out so uh, no more power for this car uh, that's our torque as well showing you you know what happens with with that and our lambda readings uh, on this particular car it's an e40 so what we would use is um, hp tuners we do use a lot of the fi line um, basically so we'll run through some of this um, this particular car we had to do some a uh, little bit funky tables so on here we um, have our boost tables and some of our numbers um, the map sensor in it does run out on this particular car at 207 uh, so their resolution is not perfect but we've got to um, do what we need in this particular application we also um, car does have very low compression which is good for 98 fuel um, into our spark tables. We're still running high and low octane spark tables and basically what we have in the high octane, um, we don't do it to a normal cars, but this car and a boosted car and a pro charger car, we change the axis uh, in here quite um, tight. And the reason we've done the axis is in here quite tight. Um, you can see there it's uh, went from 6,000, 6,4 to 6,6, 6, 6,50, 6,7, 6,8. I wanted to control the timing there uh, for a pro charger and basically what we had is pro chargers run on with the boost and the boost keeps climbing even though we keep you know, we haven't make any more power it keeps stacking in the boost so what we want to do is basically uh, don't allow it to continue with the timing but we wanted to control the timing very tightly between these ranges um, what happens if you don't do and set that up properly just with the factory settings it'll interpolarate between 4.8 to 5.2 um, so whatever numbers you might have in these uh, figures here, uh, we'll go down to the bottom figures here, um, it will change between them. So uh, for instance, we'll go down to these numbers here. So if you had a 7.5 to 9.5 uh, in between the 400 RPM uh, range difference, it would actually interpolarate between that and it'd be at eight and a half degrees. So sometimes when things are getting, and we've got a lot of cylinder pressure, um, we want infinite control and to be able to make sure that we have the timing there. So we'll set up them axis is pretty different. Uh, for you guys that don't know um, HP tuners very well, um, you can uh, do that uh, in these sections here following the edit. 
and here's your access tables as well so we've really changed it around here to um to give us some control so that's a, a little bit of a background on some of the stuff we do uh, this is mission control i run multiple screens uh, as well um, we also run screens over here we've got another one coming so i like to sit down and uh, do some uh, homework over here and, and uh, not just sit inside the car in the cabin and and do that some of these tunes require uh, a lot of time to get right so guys that's a bit of a background um, of um, yeah an insight to what goes into tuning and it's not a two second job and um, we're going to give this car a bit of a run up uh, for Glenn and uh, we'll make some power make some noise and uh, so we can do so uh, anyway we'll uh, try and do some more informative videos behind the scenes and we'll give this uh, big pro charge girl a run and see what we can do thanks guys okay guys i just went through some of the data we're just going to give it a uh, final pull um as i said it's f194a and it's just on 98 fuel metal brock uh alice 2 in a nice clean vz so what we'll do is give it a run and i'm logging it now with efi live and tuning with hp tuners the reason is efi live scanner uh, on this particular platform with the e40 does have more capabilities for what I need to see what's going on. So we'll give it a run and um, we'll see what it does. Guys, you can see a very healthy 746 rear wheel horsepower. Uh, that's no hub dyno. Uh, you come through here. That's uh, on the treads. So uh, for a lot of people are using hub dynos now, which is a really good product. That's on the wheel dyno. We can get it to hook up pretty well. Uh, that's showing you on um, EFI Live. Um, we're using that component to uh, do all the data logging for that particular run. Um, we are tuning with HP tuners on the E40 platform. Uh, as you can see here, um, we're out of fuel, um, so no more for that. It's still safe. Uh, it's rolled over its peak power anyway. Um, so yeah, that's a good result for the owner, Glenn, and his car. He'll be more than happy with his upgrade uh, that he has there. Uh, so we go back over to here, like I showed you earlier. Uh, there's the boost figures that we've got, so about 224. Um, Pro Charger keeps rolling and keeps going. This is what I was talking about here. We're, we're past our peak power. Peak power is about there. Um, that's showing you in rear wheel kilowatts, uh, triple five. We'll go over to here and the power's dropped down to 539. But what you can see here is the boost still continued to rise um, because it's belt driven and the Pro Charger as well, the ratios and how it works. It, it doesn't roll over, it keeps continuing on. That's what it did on the timing table, is uh, we fixed that up and we did our own segments to actually make that well. So Glenn's gonna be quite happy with that and that's also showing you our result with that fuel injector. Um, the results uh, don't lie, we actually hook it in, on live and showing you we're out of injector. Um, so it's good to have the live data, not no guesswork or uh, you know, running from the ECU, that is live from the injector. We know what's going on. So we've compensated for that. Uh, next mods in this car would be bigger injectors if the owner uh, chooses to do it, but I think he's gonna be quite happy in his tidy VZ. So guys, I'll uh, put them both videos together. We'll try and do a bit more of that. So some informative stuff behind the scenes, what really goes on, why we do it, why we spend the time um, and to get it, and why we have many good customers that keep coming back to us for 10, 20 years. Thanks guys, we'll uh, see you soon.